I'll start out with this way. Early December of 42, Congress passed a law to draft 18-year-olds. I was 18 on the 20th of September, 42. And this was passed in December early. And in February, the 21st, I was in the Army. Drafted and went to what, what is now Fort Campbell, Kentucky. It was called Camp Camel, Kentucky then. Uh, and the 20th Armored Division was my unit. 20th Armored Division Artillery. Not uh, now artillery, but infantry regiment. And that's where I had my basic training. They sent me to Fort Knox, Kentucky Radio Operator School to, to become a radio operator. Not only voice, but CW, which is Morse code. Early May of 44, I was shipped out from Camp Campbell to Fort Meade, Maryland. Fort Meade, Maryland. Fort Meade, Maryland. And uh, from there I went to Camp Patrick Henry, Virginia, which is a, 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 a port that they would, at that time, sending troops to Africa, Sicily, Italy campaign. They changed orders overnight, sent me back up to Camp Kilmer, New Jersey, on April, on, on uh, uh, June 3rd, set sail, 44. I didn't know where. On a ship called New Amsterdam, which was a Dutch luxury lander converted to troop carrier. And on the 6th of June, 3 o'clock in the morning, we heard a loud boom on the ship. Everybody thought we had been torpedoed, but it was soon announced quite quickly afterward that the ship had fired its gun, saluting the, the, that they had just uh, successfully invaded Normandy. Normandy D-Day invasion, that's right, Normandy invasion. What was it called? Overlord, I think. That was three days at sea. And we landed in Scotland on the 9th. Took us only six days to go. Uh, this ship was big enough to, to escape uh, the, the uh, German uh, submarine. And we didn't have to have an escort. Zigzag. Formation, you know, that's a call it. And then take us along. Anyway, I, uh, in England, of course, when we landed in Scotland and got off the boat, we immediately got on a train and was sent down to the southern part of England on the English Channel. And there, of course, we had a a camp, and they were a regular tent. I was in, spent my time in a four-man tent, you know, and a uh, canvas cot to sleep on. But anyway, we trained there for about a month. You see, D-Day was the 6th of June. <laughs> we, we crossed the channel on the 13th of July and hit him on the Hall Beach and we could still hear artillery going off. They hadn't penetrated more than about 15 to 20 miles from the beach in over a month. Hmm. Stayed all night. One night at a replacement depot, which I, they had a name for it at that time, I can't remember it now. Then sent to the front and joined on 14th of July my division 29th Infantry Division. Now the 29th was with the 1st 
if there was a division, big red one, the two divisions on Omaha Beach on D-Day. And uh, I, I joined the 29th on the, on the 14th uh, of July, which St. Lowe had not fallen. Where I joined was in Hedgerow country. And don't, don't get the idea that that was a hedgerow that you could just skip over and uh, step over. Hedgerow country was built in medieval times, five and a half feet normally, high, two foot thick, earth, made of earth, with a little hedge grown on top, but that's called, why it's called hedgerow. Hmm. And some occasion the trees too, but it was a fortress in itself. And that's why we couldn't, uh, it was a matter of a few yards a day advance if you did it. On the 20th of June, there was an Atlantic storm, uh, a cyclone type, which damaged our incoming uh, equipment, supply, ammunition, and we short, getting short on ammunition. But anyway, that was a factor, but not as much as the hedgerow country. I was in four battle campaigns. And I got to mention this. I, I was not in, injured in any way. I came close. I can explain all that if you want to go through that. And I can only say why. And there's only one reason that I could give. I believe I had a guardian angel to guide me all the way through. And I, I, I don't know how I was. I was with the division to the end of the war. What to the end of the war was May the 8th, 45. And we were on the, the Elbe River in Germany, 40 miles from Berlin, where we met the Russians at the time. My division. And of course, my company sent a patrol over there to meet the Russians. A four-man patrol across the river. It was a pretty good-sized river. And soon after, the, the, the May the 8th, when they declared the war over. After that, we were sent back to, uh, and it was uh, Bremen Enclaves, as called it. Bremen was a seaport, or, or close to it. Bremen Holland was a seaport on the North Sea. And uh, for occupation force. And that was, probably we got there about, the uh, oh, the 8th of the war was over. We was in there pretty close to uh, June, we'll put it down first. About a few days before. From that point on until December the 31st, 45, the division was called to come home, to be deactivated. I've got to mention this. When, uh, we, after St. Lowe fell, we was off the front line for the first time since D-Day. We got in a whole bunch of replacements. Now I came on there while they're still on the front, you know, and, <laughs> but that's beside the point. And while we was on the, this vacation period, I don't want to call it that, I was interviewed by my company commander. He was good enough to, to have each one of these new members come into his tent and be interviewed individually. Here's what I wanted to say about it. He asked me where I was from. I told him, Slater, Missouri. He said, I played football against you guys. He was from Lexington. You know where Lexington is? I do. <laughs> <laughs> then when we got called back to the front to fight this battle, uh, uh, what they call the league happened. He was killed. 
when the hundred yards of me. And that got me. Yeah. Do you remember his name? Yes. It, uh, Hobbs. Alvin Hobbs. Captain Alvin Hobbs. And I often thought I ought to have gone to his to Lexington to see if some of his if relatives and tell him what I knew about it and where it happened. But I didn't do it. Well, I'm proud that we done it. Uh, and what I, I want to mention that 80 percent of the, the fighting troops in World War II were 18, 19, and 20 year olds. Tom Brokaw, remember, you know him? Mm -hmm. He's a real well-known uh, reporter and commentator, I guess. He wrote a book about us called The Greatest Generation. Yes. And that's true. Uh, because that's the way it was. You, you didn't like it, you just did what you had to do. That's it. And you did more than what you thought you could do. When you got to do something, you, you got to do it, that's all.